Welcome to the Good News Express International, an inspirational program designed to explore how the good news of the gospel changed ordinary lives into extraordinary believers. Join prophetic teacher Bonnie Jones as she gathers testimonies of believers from around the globe, from the unknown to the well-known, from the hidden to the forefront, and everywhere in between, express the impact of the good news of Jesus. And now, here is your host, Bonnie Jones. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Good News Express. We are happy that you joined us today. Uh, we're going to have an awesome man of God on our interview show today. We just want you to know that, you know, Jesus came for everyone, and his life in us is, is the testimony. So we want to share that because it's a power of the testimony that brings others to Christ, and through that, he is glorified. So today, we want to... Uh, to have an interview with David Bahojas. I know I pronounced that wrong, but you can correct me. And um, he lives in Edmonton, Canada. And um, currently he's a bus driver, but he has a great testimony he wants to share with us today. So David, I just want you to take it away. Tell us how the Lord came into your life, where you were, what you were doing and all those good things. All right. Well, thank you, Bonnie. Yeah, my name is David Bohanas. The original Ukrainian pronunciation is Bohanos. And um, that means God's vessel. So it's way back in my ancestry, um, there must have been people that were God people. And uh, I was raised in the Orthodox Church, Ukrainian Orthodox. And uh, my grandparents came from the Ukraine. And in Edmonton, um, I was third generation Canadian, and I didn't know the language that my grandparents and my parents knew. So I didn't understand anything that was being said in church. David, I had, can I ask you to speak up just a little bit? I, can, yeah, but, but I had a sense of God. I had a sense of his presence. That's good. Or maybe not so much his presence, but a sense that he really is. So I had a a desire to know God from as far back as I can remember. Um, but I didn't know anything about the Bible, didn't know, know anything really about Jesus. And, uh, but that would all change one day when I was about 12 or 13, uh, the Gideons um, reached out in our church and they sent a, a fellow to speak to us. And the Gideons are the ones that uh, put this kind of Bible in a hotel room or all of hotels. Or yeah. In this lodge here where I work way up north in the oil patch where I am right now. Um, so a Gideon came and spoke to us little kids in, in uh, elementary school. And when he was, you know, I don't remember much Barney of grade six, uh, but I remember that day. And when he was speaking, he told a story about a boy that received a Bible from his mother at, at I think the age of 13, about the age I was back then. And uh, he promised his mother that he had read the, the, that from that Bible every day. So when he was telling me, telling us that story, it felt like he was talking just to me. And uh, so when I went home, I knelt on my bed and prayed and I said, God, I'm going to read a little bit of your scripture, of your, from your Bible every day for the rest of my life. So I had this little red um, Gideon um, King James Bible. And, and I started reading in, in, from the very first of Matthew chapter 1, verse 1, and I, and I kept going. And I was diagnosed dyslexic in school. I was like the slowest reader in my class. And, Reading was really difficult for me. And now here I am with this King James language, and I'm supposed <laughs> to try to understand it. So I read it. Well, that could be double challenging. Yeah, I don't understand yeah. anything. But I read it because I told God I would, and I have peace. And so I do it again the next night. And every night before I went to bed, I would read uh, a little bit of the Bible, um, going straight through it. And um, I had peace, not much understanding, but peace. 
So I read through Matthew and Mark and Luke, and I started to get, uh, I started to really, I started to understand some things that this Jesus, he really knew who he was and he knew how to answer questions really well. And hmm. I was really impressed with him. So I kept reading about him, but still having a hard time understanding. And then I get into the book of John and I get to John chapter six. Mm. And in John chapter six, Jesus gives this very difficult talk about his body being food and his blood being drink. And it says there that the disciples, some of them actually left at that point because it was too hard for them to figure out, too hard for them to understand. And then John chapter six, verse 66, it says, and some of the disciples, um, or many of the disciples, uh, left at that point. And John chapter 6, verse 67, Jesus said to the 12, are you going to go away also? And then Peter speaks up in verse 68. He says, no, Lord, where, where can we go? Where else can we go? You have the words of eternal life. Uh, we know that you are the Holy One sent from God. And so when I read that, um, that, that declaration of Peter, I made that my first prayer commitment to Jesus. That was my first time of saying to him um, a prayer, a dedication. And, uh, and it's, it's, it's a dedication that stays with me even to this day that, you know, there's a lot of stuff I don't understand. I don't, I don't, don't know what Jesus is talking about or what he's doing, but I know enough to be able to say, that he has the words of eternal life. He is from God. And that was 50 years ago uh, that I made that commitment. I was a 12 or 13-year-old boy. Now I'm 62, and I'm so glad I made that decision. And it set in, um, it set in motion uh, yeah. a whole life of an adventure with Jesus. That yeah, it really set, set the course for you that has kept yeah. you on. Yeah, because... Throughout life, I don't care who it is, things happen, you know, life happens. Mm -hmm. Times get difficult, <clears throat> but you had that to always rely on, you know, and where could you go? You know, yeah. the only safe place is in the Lord. Yeah. That's awesome. So you had that experience in, thank God for the Bereans, you know, and that they came to the school. That's really awesome. So yeah. you finally graduated from the little book they gave you to like a for real <laughs> a whole bible <laughs> i did yeah. yeah yeah so we that's really that awesome um so now um of course you grew up and went on you know did you go to college then and and what did what did you do yeah after? well my my initial experience with growing in the lord was kind of me and him and the bible and I didn't have much Christian fellowship. Um, I had a few experiences with the Lord, but basically it was just me trying to, to learn the Bible mm -hmm. until university. And that is when I, it was the first time I experienced Christian fellowship and, and met other Christians. And it, that was really uh, a time of, uh, of growth for me. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah, it's interesting because you know what, we need that, that one-on-one -on -one with the Lord, you know, for that time of fellowship and, and intimacy and really getting to know him and the word, you know, the written word and the living word. But then we also need to share that, you know, and, and we learn from others. So, you know, we do need, we do need that. So I'm, I'm glad, you know, I didn't realize that myself till I was probably close to 50. And my son actually got me into, we were going to church in Amish country in Ohio. It wasn't an Amish church, but it was in Amish country. And, um, but they had what was called kinship, which is, you know, like your home groups. And I went, I went there and that's where you really grow, you know, in the small, excuse me, smaller groups where you really can begin to, um, moving your own gifts and calling. And that's where I learned 
a lot. You know, I realized I didn't know much of anything, but these were most of the people there had been in fellowship for a long time. And so we can really grow and learn from others, you know, but that scripture you had, I think that's kept you really grounded and rooted all these years. Um, so tell me now, um, tell me a little bit more about what you do in your job and how, um, how you're able to share with others, you know, the Lord with others. Yeah. Well, I've been at, up at 16 different camps up in the oil patch. And, and when I'm in a, a camp, I'm always trying to see, is there already a, a fellowship group established? And usually there's not. And, and uh, so then I, I try to find some other person that would be interested in starting one with me. And then I go ahead and try to start one in a camp. So I've started a few of them and then I've attended ones that were already in existence. And we have one here at this camp that I'm at right now. And um, it was, a, I've been at this camp for quite a while, for a, a few years. And it was a couple of years ago that um, I was, after my morning bus driving, I was walking back to the lodge and this other fellow was walking in and I was, and he was new on site and I just started talking to him. Uh, and I told him about our fellowship group, our men's group. And then he says to me, yeah, maybe I'll check it out. I'm, I'm really in need of divine intervention, he said. <laughs> and I thought, wow, that's kind of cool. And then I started to learn a little bit about his back background. He's from the Sudan. He's, he's Muslim raised. And uh, he's, he's, he went through some really tough times in his life. And he's, and he's trying to find some answers. And he says, like, he wants to try anything. He'll tr even try Christianity. He'll try Buddhism. <laughs> he wants to find something. Yeah. He knows he needs an answer. So he started coming to our little group of oil patch workers. And it's just a very small group. You know, sometimes it's three or four, five people. And uh, so he's starting to sing with us these hymns, which he's never heard of before. And, and, and oh. hearing us guys share scripture together and then COVID came and so we couldn't meet anymore mm. but he and I agreed that we would find a place and just Bashir and I would get together and we we would share and uh, we decided that we would start reading through the gospel of John and because of our schedule we could only meet every third Sunday so mm. uh, after our, our, our evening work we met and we would spend over an hour together going through the Gospel of John. And it was so, it's, it, it's so exciting. We're going to meet this Sunday too. And it's like, for me, it's really a thrill to go through scripture with someone that has never read it before, has never, doesn't know anything about the stories of Jesus. So him and I are sharing it. And it's so real to him. He's, he's, having, he's having an experience of the presence of Jesus with us. We both feel God with us as, as we're talking. I'm so blessed. He's so blessed. Jesus is there as he promised where two or three are gathered in his name. He's there. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's my ministry is, uh, is just, uh, you know, the Lord, wow, there's an opportunity. Um, there yeah. is a small, a small bus driver who's also a Muslim. And him and I have been in, exchanging information for quite a, quite a while he's trying to get me to become a muslim and i'm trying to, <laughs> to be a jesus follower so i'm learning a lot about islam i've read the quran and stuff previously but I'm, I'm kind of frustrated that gee he hasn't seemed to budge much and um and, you know pray and, for and him to sudden, have an encounter pray for him to have an encounter with jesus okay, because a lot of times that's it they really need to see jesus and once they do, I mean, they're they're done. They they will accept Christ, but they, a lot of them, they do. They've they've grown so hard and you know calloused in their religion that. But if they yeah, pray for him to have an encounter. Yeah, you know? yeah, and that reminds me, yeah, in terms of religion, my religion too had to be was kind of callous and had to be changed, and um, I I can think of. I ended up going through seminary, and while I was there, uh, I I met 
a um a group of people that were really in love with Jesus and really knew the Father's heart. And uh, when I came back to Edmonton, I heard they were coming. So I went to this conference and there was a guy named Rick Olmsted that was speaking at it. And it was called Healing Life's Hurts. And as he, he, he gave this beautiful description of, uh, of the good news that he, he, he kind of did a, 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 an enactment of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit all in heaven looking down at the earth and, mm -hmm. and the Holy Spirit saying to, to the Father, boy, they've really made a mess of things. And the Father saying, yeah, you know, we knew this would happen, but we do have a plan. And so uh, let's talk to Jesus. And Jesus, are you willing to go? Yeah, I'm willing to go. You know, we got to get them. We got to save them. Otherwise, they're lost. But it's, you know, you're going to have to suffer. If you go, you're, it, this is going to cost you. But Jesus was willing to go. So he gave this story. And, and, and while I'm hearing that and experiencing uh, worship in a, in a fresh um, cultural current context that I never experienced before, all of a sudden, all this stuff that was just head knowledge, it just kind of dropped <laughs> in, in my heart. And I started to enter into worship. I started to experience and appreciate the Father, uh, loving heart of God. And um, it was amazing. And then I found myself in this meeting, um, just in the, hall, in, in the aisle, receiving prayer from people. And I, I've never had that experience before, people laying hands on me and praying. And while they're praying, I had a vision and I've never had a vision before that. And I get dreams. It seems like God speaks to me through dreams or encourages me through dreams, but I don't get visions much, but I had a vision and it was clear. I saw this white thing and it was just this pure white thing. And these guys were praying and they were praying from my heart. And I saw like these roots on this white thing and they're praying and they're praying that these roots of bitterness would come off of my heart and as they're praying i'm seeing this happen and, and it's almost all off and then one of them says all of it lord all of it and then it all came off and it was just a picture of god's inner healing and uh setting my heart free from bitterness and all sorts of pain and experiences growing up and things that have happened in my life and it was instantaneous but it was also a picture of the life process of continual healing and going for prayer and confessing sins and, and, and receiving God's goodness and, and, and healing and uh, breaking old vows and, and setting a, a new sight on Jesus. Yeah, it's the goodness of God that leads to repentance. And, you know, I'm, I'm thinking, you know, for your friend, the Muslim fella, I think that's as he comes to really understanding the goodness of God and he can see that through your life, you know, that he's, he want, he's going to want what you have, you know, and you have Jesus and he doesn't, you know, so it's your life of, of love and, and kindness and the goodness and, you know, just your fellowshipping with him. I mean, you're spending time with, you're taking your time to spend with him to listen, number one, you listen to him and you're teaching him also. So I think God's going to use you in a great way, you know, to not only bring him to salvation, but to nurture him. Uh, you know, it's like you've planted a lot of seeds in many people. And I always see as like some plant and some come by and water and then other ones get to see the the harvest of what you know they get to see the finished product there so you know and i think that's kind of what you're doing you know you've planted a lot of seeds and yet you've watered some and you get to see the fruit of others so that's really it's awesome how the lord is really using you in you know what's important is um i think people want to have not not everybody but people want to have a big ministry and reach the multitudes or, you know, just go to the multitudes. And I'm always concerned with like people that you, you see, they have 
thousands or hundreds of thousands of people that come to those um, meetings. I, what do you call them? Crusades. And I know I would say to Bob, you know, I wonder, like there's over a million people at one of these crusades and they show that everybody has their hands raised and like they're receiving Christ, but how many really did and how many received, you can receive here, you can speak anything with your mouth, but in your heart. So how many really a week later or a year later, how many is really walking with Jesus? But that one-on-one -on -one discipleship, what you're doing, Jesus said, go and make disciples, right? So you're really discipling him. So that's really important. And, um, you know, that one-on-one -on -one evangelism or pastorship or discipleship, you know, that is what's really going to count because that one soul that you reach, how many is he going to reach? Can you imagine it? He's got family, I'm assuming. So if he turns his life over to Christ to be like, um, oh, Cornelius, you know, him and his family, they all got saved. So, yeah, yeah I think you've got a great ministry and you may not even be aware of it. So, <laughs> anyhow, um, let's see. I'm just wondering, is there, are there any stories or anything you want to share? Like, mm -hmm. Any Bob Jones stories? <laughs> yeah. Kelowna, BC. Okay. Um, he was up, I don't know when it was. Uh, it has, has to fit with my diagnosis of dyslexia. It's not very good at remembering dates, but I think it was uh, early 90s. And there was a conference there and he was speaking about eagles and, and with their, their, their uh, they were going to be released. And it, it was really encouraging, very encouraging. Was he with Wes really? and Stacy Campbell? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah. That's right. And um, and so there were a lot of good speakers there. And he was, at, 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 when, when he wasn't speaking, he was uh, up kind of in a balcony area and sitting there. And I went just to introduce myself to him and say hi. And, uh, and I was going through a very difficult time of my marriage falling apart at that time. So I, I shared that with him and um, maybe expecting some kind of prayer or counseling on that issue. But what he said to me was, well, now you know what Jesus feels like. And <laughs> I was like, um, you know, so Jesus has a separation. His, his, his church is, is separating from mm -hmm. him. It's, it's not, it's so huh. um, he knows what uh, it's like to have a marital struggle with his bride type of thing. <laughs> so so he, he, he just shared these, this little word with me. And then, you know, nice to meet you. And then I walked away. And then I went around the corner of this. Uh, second floor balcony area and then I just calmly walked around the corner and then bang I was on the floor <laughs> weeping, crying and just I guess it's intercession just praying for the church to come back to Jesus mm -hmm. to find uh, her first love and, mm -hmm. and, and and weeping over the heart of Jesus that is broken in in terms of the church being distant from him yeah and so um that's yeah. really important. Isn't that just like Jesus would do, though? They'd, they'd ask Jesus a question. He'd come back with something totally different. And you'd go, what? <laughs> Why did you say that? <laughs> you know. So. Well, um, David, do you have, um, kind of in closing, do you have a, a word of wisdom for um, those who are, are watching? You know, something you'd, something yeah. like maybe is on your heart that you feel would be a, a tool for yeah. others. Yeah, well, I can't go wrong with this word of wisdom, Bonnie, and the word is Jesus. Like, we, we can't go wrong with that word. And, you know, as long as it's in love, in, in, in humility, if we have an opportunity to tell someone about the one who saves us, uh, the one who saved us, and is, um, is our best friend, and our, our big brother, and our Lord, and creator um, go for it you know 
tell your colleague about Jesus. Um, it'll probably turn out better than you think. It probably will. Yeah. Once in a while it won't, but I think most of the time it'll turn out better than you think. Yeah. Yeah, I say never lose um, an opportunity, you know, no matter where you're at or what you're doing. Um, I know the Lord had me on this little secret mission, you know, <laughs> and he's, it was like day before Thanksgiving. So I was at a Walmart looking for a turkey dinner that I could microwave for the next day. <laughs> and, the, and I ran into a man, actually he ran into me. I was looking at little cheapy videos. <laughs> and so the man stopped and talked to me, you know, and he just started unloading all of his troubles. Yeah, it's not a coincidence. And he gave me his first name. Okay. <laughs> so anyhow, uh, but he just kept on and on and on all, you know, and I would tell him about Jesus. And he just didn't, well, yeah, blah, blah. he just didn't want to hear anything about it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. You know, anyhow. So he started walking away <laughs> and then he turned and he came back and he said, what, what did you want? I said, I didn't want anything. He said, well, you called my name. I said, no, that wasn't me. That was Jesus. <laughs> so he was not a happy camper, but you know what? Um, I know the Lord touched him and the Lord, you know, I just sowed a seed, you know, that's it. So but yeah, never waste an opportunity. So, well, David, you know what? I was really excited too. You said you work like in the, like the oil, Kind of oil field, is that right? Yeah, oil patch, we call it up here, yeah. The oil patch, yeah. I just, to me, the oil is the Holy Spirit. So <laughs> you're just yes. in that patch all the time. You've got, you've got the right, you've got the right job. And you're a bus driver. How, how prophetic can that be, you know? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's like the Lord, you know, I have a lot of dreams where I'm on a bus, but the Lord's always driving the bus, you know? So it's like, the Lord is with you in your, as the bus driver, you know, driving the anointing, driving in the anointings. I mean, you really have a, you have an awesome job and, and you're doing a great work for the kingdom. So keep up the good work. Okay. Okay. Well, David, I just want to thank you for being with us today. I know that your testimony will, will touch the heart of many people and, uh, you know, just remain dedicated where the Lord has you and keep, you know, touching other people. And um, I want to thank everybody that joined our, our program today. And I just want to remind you that, you know, Jesus, he was in the, he got baptized and went into the wilderness for 40 days. And when he came out, you know, he was there and tempted. I could not go 40 days without eating or drinking, you know, but he did. And he was tempted three times. And when he came out of there, you know, the first thing he did, he, he's questioned, you know, and he, he came out preaching. He said, uh, he said, the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe yes. in the gospel. Okay. And then the very last thing that he said in uh, Mark, just before he ascended, this is after the resurrection, just before he ascended, he said, go into all the world mm. and teach the gospel. Well, that gospel is the good news it's in good news of jesus christ and what he has done in your life you know everybody's life you're really the prophet of your own life do you know that and your life is the testimony of jesus prophecy is the testimony of jesus so what has the lord done for you and what are you doing with the gift that he gave you mm. david was a good example here the lord gave him a gift and he's a really pastoral evangelistic gift. And he's using that every day, no matter what he knows it, that the Lord is with him. So you be blessed now. We will see you next time. We want you to join the Good News Express. And, um, oh, I'm sorry, David, you know, I forgot to ask you if anybody wanted to contact you. Um, like for counseling or advice, or maybe some Muslims have heard this and they want to know, maybe secretively, you know, they don't want to talk out somebody that they may know, but how could they contact you? Yeah, 
Yeah, my um, uh, um, my email address it's look to Christ. <laughs> it's look to Christ. Oh. Actually, it's l o o k t o c at gmail dot com. Okay, I like that. T o c at gmail dot com. Okay, great, and we'll put that um. We'll put that uh, on our screen also so that people can see that. And so if you get strange emails, <laughs> he's, he's the man to email if you want to know about Jesus, because this man knows Jesus. Okay, so be blessed and we'll see you next time. We hope that today's testimony has both glorified God and implanted the seed of a new perspective of his love for you. If you are wondering, how can I get my testimony on board the Good News Express, simply go to our website at didyoulearntolove.org and click on the link for the Good News Express. It will take you to the easy-to-fill-out application page. Once you're finished, click Submit.